international corporations are modifying our weather all the time. And they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. This next story is so unbelievable, we didn't think it could possibly be true. But after receiving thousands of records and declassified reports from the Army, it's confirmed that during the Cold War, the United States military conducted secret tests on unsuspecting people in the city of St. Louis. Lisa Martino Taylor's life work has been to uncover details of the Army's ultra secret military experiments carried out in St. Louis and other cities during the 1950s and 60s. This study was secretive for a reason. Um, they didn't have um, volunteers stepping up and saying, Yeah, I'll breathe zinc cadmium sulfide with radioactive particles. These Army archive pictures show how the tests were done in Corpus Christi, Texas in the 1960s. In Texas, planes were used to drop the chemical, but in St. Louis, the Army placed chemical sprayers on buildings and station wagons. City officials were kept in the dark about the tests. The Cold War cover story was that the Army was testing smoke screens to protect cities from a Russian attack. Clearly, they went to great lengths to deceive people. By making hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests, she uncovered once classified documents that confirmed the spraying of zinc cadmium sulfide. The greatest concentration of this compound was sprayed near the Pruitt Igo housing complex just south of downtown St. Louis. It was home to 10,000 low income people, and an estimated 70% were under the age of 12. Martino Taylor claims they all unknowingly inhaled this compound morning, noon, and night so the government could measure its effects on their lungs. So this is in violation of all medical ethics, all international codes, and the military's own policy at that time. And Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez has once again accused the United States of playing God. This time, it's Haiti's disastrous earthquake that he thinks the U.S. was behind. Spanish newspaper ABC quotes Chavez as saying that the U.S. Navy launched a weapon capable of inducing a powerful earthquake off the shore of Haiti. He adds that this time, it was only a drill, and the final target is destroying and taking over Iran. A wild accusation from Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He says Western countries are causing drought in certain parts of the world, including Iran. He says they're using high-tech equipment to drain raindrops from clouds. He basically says European countries are stealing rain from Iran for their own use. better part of 30 years I worked in the aerospace and defense industry had a secret clearance twice during my career some of the technology that I saw or uh, participated in the creation of tends to play a role in um, some of the, the things that are used to control the weather the very distribution process is being employed in the aerosol campaign manipulating the weather 
crops, um, you know, taking over the, the, uh, the food production or controlling the food production. The military applications, the process evolved when they realized in the, in the 1800s that you can put things into the environment that will influence the uptake of moisture and where it drops out of the atmosphere again. The metal particulates, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal. When the geoengineering really got underway with the Russians in the mid-70s, we ended up with snow in Miami. We ended up you know, with frost deep into Mexico. You know, the bizarreness of the weather really exploded on the scene when, uh, when weather engineering got going in the mid-70s. The Dakotas, in winter, they recorded a temperature of almost 100 degrees, 94 degrees. It broke the former record by 32 degrees. There's very profound things that people don't notice. Blue sky is almost never. We almost never have dew on the ground. That's a known consequence of geoengineering, if they did it, which they appear to be. It sucks the moisture out of the atmosphere. It doesn't descend, doesn't form dew. We have massive temperature disruptions. People are starting to wonder, why is it 80 degrees one day and then snowing the next day at 50 degrees or 45 degrees and then back up to 80 the day after that? When you push and pull the climate with these, these manipulation programs, of which there's a mountain of data to corroborate their existence, then, then you start to have massive fluctuations in, in the system. And we saw in March in the continental U.S. there were 15,232 temperature records broken. That's profound. Some of the daytime highs, the former records were broken by as much as 32 degrees. Don't people wonder what in the world is going on? Whether they want to make it snow at 45, 46, 47 degrees. I remember when 38, 39 was a big deal those kind of snowfalls in the upper 30s and now that's been pushed into the 40s there's a patent called ice nucleation for weather modification this is a patent from nasa it can be found online in its full form this patent is for the creation of artificial snowstorms from what would have been rainstorms however preposterous this sounds to people if they look up chinese create snowstorms they will find a, a a long list of articles where the Chinese Bureau of Weather Modification openly admitted that they were creating snowstorms until they did a billion dollars worth of damage in Beijing. So my question would be if the Chinese can do this and NASA has a patent for the same purpose, why would we believe snow events here are natural when it's snowing now regularly at 45 degrees, sometimes 50 degrees, heavy, wet, concrete snow that's full of aluminum, full of barium, full of strontium. Consider the ice pack in their first aid kit that can sit dormant at room temperature for decades until the chemicals are mixed together, at which time it creates ice. As an on-air meteorologist, I had a responsibility to my audience. There were storms that were not behaving as they were modeled or they historically would have re responded. If you can control where moisture is collected and where it's dropped, so to speak, in the form of rain or any other kind of precipitation, then you can really, uh, you can do everything. You can steer the weather system. If you want to be able to manipulate the weather, one of the things we know about the materials that are being used in the aerosols, we, we've seen everything from aluminum oxide, barium salts, strontium, copper sulfate, uh, potassium iodide, um, a number of different kinds of things, each of which have different levels of reactivity with the moisture in the air. Some, uh, like aluminum oxide, tends to sequester the moisture, the aluminum oxide nanoparticles, which are microscopically fine and uniform in size, uh, attract the humidity.